Shaq Quarterman, of course, from the University of Miami, kind enough to join us now on the show. Talk a little bit with Shaq here. We'll adjust the uh, camera so they can see you because uh, we're, we're live, Shaq, on YouTube. Live, live. Okay. We're, we're, we're live, live, all the way live. Don't even have to walk. Don't even have to talk. Just slide, slide, slip. At least. Okay, I'm, I'm done. That's old rap. You know any of that old rap? Do you follow old rap? Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. His mic's not on. Wait a minute. Is it? Which one is it? Testing. Try to get. Okay. Testing. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Um. Anyway, so you you follow old rap? Follow? No. I think I go back as far as you know. Tupac, Biggie. Big okay. L. All right. All right. Okay. No. All right. So what do you prepare for games? What What do you use? What What music gets going? Rap music. Rap music. I gotta listen to Lil Boosie. Maybe some Gucci Man. Some Kevin Gates. You know, uh, Chief Keef, Kodak Black, those type of artists. Okay, all right. Uh, so, first of all, first day, what's the toughest thing, Shaq, when you've never played with any of these cats? The only guy you know is Michael. And uh, that's the only other guy you've played with, which helps a little bit. But talk a little bit about that adjustment, that first day, having to get to know everybody and get in sync. Because... I, I've been doing this. This is my 21st year coming to these things. Right. And I don't really judge too heavily on the first day because I find it really difficult for all of you exactly. to kind of get in sync. Second and third days, you know, you got to speed it up, right. baby. You got to get you gotta get going. Right. Well, well, exactly what you said, you know. Um, the beginning of the day was very tough, you know, because you don't have the chemistry with a lot of guys, you know. A lot of guys come from schools where, you know, Different things were accepted and this, that, and the third. But as the day went on, you see everybody become more comfortable with each other. And that was a, a good sight to see, you know, especially for the first day. I feel as though we ended way better, you know, across the board than we started. What do you got to prove this week? I have to prove I'm the best player here. It's that simple. Not just best defensive player. I want to be the number one rated player when I walk out of here. And what specifically do you have to show folks that maybe they're questioning right now? Uh, I have to show them that I could play all three downs, first, second, and third. You know, that's what I came to prove. Right, and because when I talk to guys, they want to see you in coverage. Exactly, that's what you hear, right? That's the same thing, right? Exactly. That's, so, how what have you been working on to help you get better in that area? Well, very, really, my coverage prowess. You know, a lot of it's about knowledge. You know, passing concepts, knowing. Um, in certain coverages where the quarterback wants to go with the ball, you know, that's half of the battle. Then the second part of it is, you know, the physical aspect, you know, working on your breaks, you know, as a middle linebacker, you know, uh, I can count a couple of times, you know, in my career where we actually spent like a lot of time working on, you know, getting in and out of breaks, in and out of breaks and, um, and things of that nature, you know, playing through the hands, playing through the ball, things like that. Okay. Uh, tell, talk to me a little bit about this season, how tough it was for you guys to end the way it ended for you guys and, and some of those defeats. Well, it was very tough, you know, very, very tough because we have s such high standards, you know, uh, year in and year out. So, you know, falling short of where we wanted to go was very, you know, disappointing. But, you know, that's life. You know, uh, I don't think all was lost. You know, I definitely think I took some lessons with me through, uh, from this season that would make me a better player and a better man. So. Shaq, can you explain how you guys did not look prepared after every bye week and even after the bowl game? Like, you guys came out flat for all those games, and it was the weirdest thing. And then you found yourselves behind the eight ball in all those games almost pretty well, much. Well, actually, um, Coach Diaz brought it to our, um, our attention too uh, because, like you said, it's shown up multiple times. I can't quite put a, a pinpoint why that is the way that it was, um, but maybe, you know, usually – with a game off or a week off, you know, you come back and, I don't know, maybe you, you, you're just not as attentive as you were before, you know. Maybe you're a little bit too comfortable. Uh, did you – everybody knows you. Like, everybody knows you're focused, man. You're, you're, you bring the lunch pail. You're a character guy. Did everybody follow your lead on that team? Because it, it, it almost feels like there wasn't that kind of shot quarterman commitment from every guy in that in that and I don't want to I don't want to single you out alone but I'm just saying I didn't see or it didn't seem like that kind of dedication that you have um I think a lot of the guys uh were dedicated a lot of the guys I think a lot of them respected me enough to know you know whenever I would step to them or you know to pick them up encourage them or sometimes you have to get onto a teammate you know because they're not holding themselves to the standard 
So in that aspect, I never had any lashbacks or, or, or you know, uh, instances where somebody took, you know, a great deal of offense to it because I stand on the side of winning, you know, and when you stand on the side of winning, it's hard for you to be in the wrong because it's, it's nothing personal. You know, if I mess up, M Michael Pickney will grab me by my face mess and tell me. It's right. all accountability. So that's how I feel about it. Do, do you think you had enough of those kind of guys on this team? Because that's maybe what... I think what so. I think so. I think the thing people don't understand is... Because it's... Fr listen, it's frustrating he, for us to watch you lose the FIU, to watch you struggle with... What is it? Central Michigan, I think right. it was. Uh, you lose to Duke. You lose, uh, you lose to Tech. La Tech. No, La Tech. Uh, at least Virginia Tech is, a, you know, the, these other teams, you were better than them. Right. Like, you got better talent than those. Like, the right. four. You should have been a 10 win team. Let's put it that way. Right. Don't you think that that's what you guys should have right. been? That's you should have been. That's definitely what we were. Yes, sir. Right? Those, because if you guys have 10 wins, we're thinking, wow, you're, you were seven last year. You won those four games you were supposed to win, including the bowl game. Mm -hmm. We're feeling so good about Manny now. Now but it was another year of losing those close games and struggling. With yeah, them. I understand. I understand, but I also want you to understand it's just as frustrating on the other side. You know, being in those games, and I know the fans have been waiting patiently. You know, and and it it grows tiring. But never forget that there's people out there. You know, actually doing it and laying their bodies out there on the line. You know, it's not a play thing. Especially for me, you know, I was. It's not but a play. That's what thing. we know. That I don't. I don't. Not everybody knows that. But we know that about you. You know what I mean? Like nobody will question Shaq Quarterman at all. We could talk about, hey, you know, he might struggle in pass coverage. Right. But we're never going to question your character, your dedication, your effort, your leadership, all of those kind of things. Mm. And so now, the the twisted part, Shaq, is, what do you tell fans now that? They're going into next year going, I don't know if Manny's the guy. What do you, what do you After tell? After year one, I would tell them they should probably slide then, to be honest. You know, I know, and it's, it's, it's like, it's tough love, you know. I don't have a, a, a answer to give the fans that would make them feel, you know, at home and just, you know, and forget about this season, you know, because I can't forget about the season. But you have to understand that, you know, we're going to keep moving. Do I think Miami will repeat and have another year, a six win? No, I do not. I would, I would, I do not think, you know, the season will be like this next year. I don't. Why? Um, Tell me. One, because our, that, that, all of they're the guys, losing you, dude. Right? I, 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 who takes over for you? Who takes over for Michael Pickney? I'm not just talking about the next linebacker. Right. I'm talking about the next leader. Right. Who takes over for you? Okay, well, I think that first the answer is that if you look on our roster, how many young guys, and is. People don't understand coming in in college and playing at certain positions, in certain positions that's unheard of. You don't you don't hear of a freshman tackle coming in and being thrown in the fire, and then people don't understand why he was thrown in that fire. But they expect him like you know the teams that we played didn't care if he was a freshman. He understood that. But then when you look at the grand scheme of things and people want to know, well, why isn't Miami you know in the same conversation as you know the Clemsons, the Alabamas in the? Or did you look at you know what's been happening? You know. My senior class is the smallest senior class we had in a while. For you to have a great team, I, I'm pretty sure every great team that made it to the playoffs this year had a senior class who were more than productive. You ha your seniors have to play great ball. We had seven seniors, I believe, eight seniors. That's tough. Half of my class didn't make it to my senior year. They didn't make it to my junior year. That's tough. So now you have to lean on guys who haven't been groomed, maybe groomed enough, to understand the standard, to understand how we do things here, but you have to lean on them. So through, you know, their, their temporary faults, I would call them, until they, you know, have been vetted, what do you, what do you expect? You know, they play hard, they fight, right. but they don't, ha they, they don't have the Shaq Quarterman, you know, vet mentality yet, and you can't expect them to, you know? Right, right. But, right. but Miami, honest, it's a winning coach. They, they you know, they don't, they don't care. They want to win no matter what. And they've been waiting patiently, and I know it because I've been waiting patiently too. Oh yeah, no, we're, we're all waiting patiently, right. I and mean, it's just one of those things. And then you're you're hoping for the, the 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 program to take that next step, and we're not seeing it. Then we didn't see it under Randy, we didn't see it under Al Golden, we didn't see it. Mark Richter was that one year that looked like it was going to be that year that was going to start to catapult you. Mm -hmm. And then took the step back. And then Manny takes over. And we all thought Manny was, I, I thought Manny was the right guy. Right. And then 
this year is like, oh man, this was, this was, this is one of the more depressing years in a long, long time. Because not because I expected big things from you guys, but because I expected you guys to take care of the business that you're supposed to take right. care of. Right. And I, I understand that. You know what I mean? I definitely understand that. Yeah. Does when you hear that they could be talking to Alonzo Highsmith to come in to kind of look over the program, is that something that you think is needed? Needed? I think I think he'd be a great asset. I love Alonzo. Even when I get to talk to him personally, you know, it's fire and brimstone, but it's honesty, you know. And you need people like that. There's not enough of people like that, you know, in the world. So to have a guy like him who's done it, who's done it, you know, it's a it's a different degree of respect when somebody's actually done it. You know, he's been to the mountaintops, and if he tells me how to get there, uh, you know, right? Of see course. what I'm saying. But I think that would be a, a great move they could add him. You know, I definitely think it would be a it's going to be a difference already, but it will be, you know, a quicker difference or a bigger difference. I, I do. So, Shaq, what, what's this, what, the next step for you after this? What do you do in order to get prepared for the draft? For the draft, uh, depending on how I do uh, here, I hear that they're inviting people to the Reese's Bowl. Um, I'll be there next week. Right, right. And then uh, it's back to training. It's back to, you know, uh, doing what I need to do to show everybody that I'm fast, you know. So that's that, really that's the only question mark on me. I feel so fast so, and pass coverage. So prove and get a pass for the Reese's Senior Bowl next week. That's what you want to yes, do uh, now, right? I, I want to be with the best, and the best right here, right now. So I'll be. The, uh, I plan to be one of the best here, so I can go play with the the rest of the high talent. So what'd you think when you walked onto the field and you see all the NFL people looking at you? Like you're used to thousands of people. Mm. But now these are the most critical eyes right. that, that are out there. It's not just a media guy or a fan or whatever. Right. That's no big deal. But when you see all the critical eyes, what goes through your mind? Do you think about any of that stuff? At first, you know, it's the first time going through it. Definitely it's a different experience, you know, seeing all these guys who, you know, every time you look to the left, you don't have, you don't have to say a word. They write something on their notepad. Yeah. You know, that's different. But um, as, it, as it goes on, you know, I'm here for a reason. That's what you have to understand. Well, that's what I have to tell, you know. I'm here for a reason. You know, if I didn't deserve to be here, I wouldn't be here. And, you know, these people are here for a reason as well, so I must be doing something right, so I need to continue to do whatever got me here, you know. Make it simplify it, you know. You can't be fooled by the – because that's the whole reason, you know, they do it like this. You know, they want to put you in a different environment. They want to, you know, see how you re react to things. And, I, and I'm, too, I'm too cool, calm, and collective to let it get me right now. Well, hey, just get prepared, man, because in the combine, they'll say, hey, so Shaq, you know, the last time you wore women's clothes, how, how did it go for you? Right. And then you're like, what? What? Hey, uh, Shaq, the last time you did heroin, what happened to you? Right. I hear, I hear all those type uh, of yeah, the yeah. crazy questions. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Part of the process. Because they want to throw you off. They want to mess with you a little mm -hmm. bit. They know you don't do heroin. You want to see if you just go off on them or something like that. Right. All right so they've already warned you about that. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what's, the, what's the craziest one they've warned you about? Um, well, it's really just drugs and talking about, you know, people's moms and mothers right. and fathers. I mean, I, I understand the process, but geez. Yeah, no, that one, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to go to that extreme. That's not, They do. But yeah. Yearly, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's definitely one of those. Um, Shaq, man, I, I appreciate you joining us. I know you got to go to another interview now and, and talk to another team, and I appreciate you handling the tough questions because I know it wasn't an easy season for you, but I want you to know that, and I said it in the interview, people know who you are, man, and I think if the Canes had a locker room filled with guys like you, you'd be competing against the Alabamas and the Clemsons of the world. So keep carrying yourself the way you do because uh, you're headed to big places. Thank you. Thank you. That, that is Shaq. you having me. Thank you.